Now, race director Rowan James joins us now to shed light on yesterday's race and the sad news. Um, Rowan, you know, I would like to talk about the race itself, obviously, but all of this news has come out today during the course of today. Firstly, um, do we know what happened to Pagamil and do we know what happened with Mzamo as well during yesterday's race? Uh, good evening, uh, Floni. Yes, um, I've been in uh, contact with the uh, race doctor just regarding the two athletes in question. Um, so what exactly the underlying causes? No, we do not know that yet. Uh, one of the athletes is scheduled for an autopsy tomorrow. The other one is then scheduled for Wednesday. So uh, on the conclusion of those aut autopsies, we will have a clear indication of what transpired and led to their sad passing. Um, has the Comrades Marathon Association been in touch with the families? Uh, is there some sort of assistance that you'll be uh, giving the families? Obviously, this is still very fresh, um, and there will be further details that will come out. Yes, uh, I can confirm that the chairman of the Comrades Marathon Association has been in contact with both families, as well as the uh, race doctor who was in contact with one of the um, uh, athletes yesterday already. And then uh, just in terms of uh, assistance, all athletes have to be uh, members of clubs and part of the um, uh, requirements or, or benefits of being a member of a club is that they are covered by a national ins uh, insurance of all national athletes. So that would be the uh, course of action and remedy that the athletes or their, their families can take to get some sort of assistance. Um, there's a report that a third runner is in a serious condition. Are you able to confirm if this is the case, if you know anything about uh, that yet? So what I can confirm is uh, that the... In, uh, let's just take a step back. In, in terms of in the conclusion of uh, last night's event, uh, when the uh, hospital, the temporary hospital that we have on site at the finish uh, closes, and that closes at around about 8 p.m. in the evening, any, any uh, athletes that are still in the medical tent are then transferred to hospital. So at 8 p.m. last night, 41 uh, athletes were transferred to St. Augustine's Hospital, uh, which is part of the NetCare group, and NetCare being the Comrades Marathon uh, a sponsor and, and appointed medical provider. And then a further 33 athletes were then also transferred to the NetCare and Schlangel Hospital. All of those athletes have now been uh, discharged. Most of them were discharged last night because the main ailment tends to be uh, dehydration. With the exception of two other, uh, with the exception of two of the athletes in that group, and that's maybe where the where you you're taking your lead from. Both athletes were in ICU. One athlete has um, since been uh, both of them been on ventilators. The one athlete is still on a ventilator. The other athlete came off the ventilator this morning, but is still in ICU purely for an observation point. And is this normal to have that many um, runners that are having these um, post-run or even mid-run um, effects? Um, have you had a situation like this before in previous runnings of the race? Or is it just that because this has happened, we are now um, focusing attention on it more? The, the, um, is it normal? Um, yes and no. Now, what I, let me quantify that by, first of all, yes is in... Um, normal from a point of view that we can, depending on uh, the conditions on the day, we can have anything from 250 to 600 athletes go through the medical facility uh, at the finish. So yes, that part is normal. Uh, is it normal? No, from a death point of view. Absolutely. The last time that Comrades actually had a death in the actual race itself on race day was in 2012. Uh, and in total, uh, in the last 40 years, there's, there's been eight deaths on race day itself. Uh, over the previous years, uh, what we have tend to, uh, or have found is that in times people have gone home and then uh, they could have, for argument's sake, picked up a underlying viral condition or anything like that and then admitted themselves to hospital and since passed on. So that was would be more direct. So from a direct uh, uh, participation in the Comrades Marathon itself, it's been eight people in the last 40 years. Okay. Um, just finally, um, Rowan, I know there's also news about the 2016 women's winner, um, Shane Postman, as well. But just for you, um, you know, you obviously very, we spoke to you before um, the race on Friday, and obviously there's a lot of joy about the return of this race. Just how do you assess, I guess, overall, this is happening, but you've had the return of your race as well? You know, just standing on the, on the finish line yesterday and just seeing the, the, the runners pouring over the finish line and the amount of emotion and joy uh, that they were experiencing and then uh, 
uh, the amount of compliments that we we as the Comrades Marathon Association have received from the runners, just thanking us from the lead uh, from the winner uh, to Tete Jijama, all the way down to various just everyday athletes, weekend warriors, just thanking us for putting the race back on and bringing it back again after a two-year break. Um, just makes it, it's a mammoth job to to put an event like this on uh, over the time, but it just makes it all that much more sweeter and, and worth it, knowing that uh, the participants on the day had an amazing experience. Lovely. Um, thank you so much for that. And um, condolences to the families of the two runners that have passed away at yesterday's Comrades Marathon. That was the race director, Rowan James, just shedding some light on uh, those events from yesterday.